I just woke up. 10 minute power sit. What is it? It's a 10 minute power sit. Why would you do it? If you're like me, you wake up in the morning stressed, anxious, depressed, this, that, and the other thing, and I'm making coffee, and you need to get going. 10 minute power sit. 10 minute power sit is a sit you do when you're not gonna sit. A little bit of zen goes a long way. It's strong stuff, like this coffee. Okay, I'm gonna shave my face and wash my booty and we're gonna do this thing. So the 10 minute power sit was first taught to me by no one because it's not a thing. The great thing about Zen meditation is that it's always the same whether you're sitting for 10 minutes or for three hours. You always have a North Star to turn to no matter how crazy your mind's getting, no matter how wild and out of control your life is, the practice more or less always stays the same. Okay, so first of all, here I am, I'm at my mom's house. She is a hardcore Catholic and needless to say does not have a Zafu meditation cushion. What do I do? Well, luckily I have pillows. I just have one pillow here, which I put between my legs when I sleep at night because I'm an old freaking man with knobby knees. I have a second pillow here, which I simply fold in half. Wouldn't you know it? That's all I need. Okay. I always say you only need, do you need an amazing enlightened teacher to sit meditation? Do you need a massive sangha with lots of people to show you along the way? Do you need to be a different person who had better karma and was born in Japan and happened to find their way into a monastery at an early age? Do you need all these things in order to sit meditation? No, you need two things, lungs and an ass. Lungs to breathe through and an ass to sit on. That is all you need to meditate. It's great. Okay, okay, so. Your legs are crossed, ideally. If you can't cross your legs, you got bad legs, you got bad knees, no problem, sit on a chair. Normally, you cross your legs. You can do half lotus, which is your um, ankle up on one thigh like this, your foot resting on one thigh, either side, or you can do full lotus, which is both feet on both thighs. Ooh, I'm feeling that in my hips. I haven't done full lotus in a while, but it is kind of the most solid position I've ever found to sit in, if you can do it. If not, whatevs. You can do Burmese as well, which is just your feet crossed like this. I don't know if you can see it. Um, just kind of crossed comfortably. It's important to have your knees touching the floor. You don't want your knees pointing up in the air because that puts tension on your sciatica and it's just not a very stable position. And as your body does, your mind follows. Okay? What do you do with your hands? Well, there are different mudras you can do. Lay your right hand on the bottom, line up your knuckles, lightly touch your thumbs, and put it to your diaphragm. This is a very classic zazen sitting position. Ooh, it feels good. A friend who does tai chi told me this ties, ties your chi together, your energy, and, and, and folds it up nicely in a circle here at your waist. I don't know about that, but it is comfortable. Or you can just take your thumb, grab it with your right hand, and gently rest it against your diaphragm here. No problem, that's what I do. Or you just put your hands on your thighs, okay? So you sit upright, not stiff, not rigid, but not kind of slack and unconscious. You sit upright, your spine, you should be t pivoting your hips a little bit, so you've got a nice pivot in your spine, a natural curve in your spine. In an ideal world, your nose is parallel with your diaphragm or your belly. Your eyes are located with a soft gaze, so you're not staring, but you're eyes aren't closed in Zazen. We keep our eyes open because we're not pushing the world out. We're not going to special interior states. The world outside of us is part of our Zazen, so we keep it in the picture, so to speak. So your eyes are forward with a light gaze about three feet in front of you. You take a few breaths. This is regular Zazen meditation, not our 20 minute, a 10 minute power sit. Inhale deeply into the diaphragm. So it's not chest breathing. Chest breathing is shallow, and you do that when you're puffing yourself up or you're angry or you're scared. Relax, go down into the diaphragm of the belly of the hara, which is about an inch below your uh, belly button and an inch deep. There's a certain type of hara breathing. Someday we'll talk about that. But the important thing is relax your diaphragm. Relax your belly, please. Your be my belly is always tensed, I think because I'm getting a little bit of a middle-aged pouch, and so I hold it in. <clears throat> 
Breathe deeply. Hold your mudra. You breathe through your nostrils, tongue on the roof of the mouth, lips shut, gently touching. Face relaxed, relax the muscles in your face. Take off your mask. Man, we all wear our thoughts on our face, right? So let your mask drop. Let the muscles in your face relax. Let your shoulders drop, yeah? Let your shoulders drop. We also carry tension in our shoulders. We're always hunched and we're waiting for the blow to come, you know? Or we're leaning forward, right? We're leaning forward expectantly, waiting for the interesting thing to come around the corner. In Zazen, you, you sit up straight, don't lean forward. Nose, diaphragm parallel, thumbs touching lightly or resting in your, in your legs or resting in your lap. You take a few deep breaths. Oh, I almost forgot you were there. What now? What do you do once your body is totally situated properly? Okay? What do you do with your mind? Well, the practice is very, very clear and simple. I'm embarrassed to almost have to repeat it. It's so simple. Uh, you give your focus and attention, your heart and soul and mind. You put that energy up in your noodle into the breathing. So you, people ask me, well, am I supposed to be thinking about the breath? No, how do you think about breath? You, you, you never think about breath. So don't think about breath now. You do it completely. My mentor used to say that don't th think of effort as, as sincerity. You're sincerely breathing outward. And if you give that exhale completely, then the inhale comes naturally and you receive without hesitation and without resistance. You, you receive the outside world in the form of the inhale, right? All very simple stuff. Now the mind is going to wander. Maybe, maybe before you even get through a quarter of the first inhale, your mind is going to start thinking. Okay, it's like a it's like a kid that that you can distract for like two seconds when you're talking to them, but then they're back to whatever the problem was they were having. Okay, and the practice is when you start thinking again, sooner or later, your natural intelligence or awakeness or Buddha nature, or consciousness, or wisdom, whatever you want to call it, the, it's going to let you know that you were thinking. The practice now is to take the knife off the kitchen table and slit your wrist. No, that you do not beat yourself up. You don't have to think about how you didn't sit right. You just you, you woke up and that's beautiful. You were think you were in a thought trance and now you woke up and the practice is to do the same thing over again. You get a chance to give yourself away again, to give yourself to the breath. And the thoughts arise and you don't freeze up and start thinking about them and grabbing onto them no matter how interesting they are. And you don't, you don't cram them down into a corner, push them into a ball with the density of the universe before it became the Big Bang and try and pitch it into nothingness and forget about it because then the thoughts will come back twice as strong. There's a wind outside, sorry. Thoughts will come back twice as strong. So you let the thoughts arise, you let them go. It's like that wind out there. It just comes and goes. and You don't pay it too much attention, right? And you bring your focus and your giving and your sincerity back to the breathing. But Jack, you're saying, what about the 10 minute power sit? Here we go. So here's what my morning looks like sometimes. I wake up, I've got to go to fly to Los Angeles. I've got a massive stack of papers that I have to deliver to the Austrian embassy in Los Angeles. Hopefully they're going to give me my visa D. Hopefully I won't have to make a return appointment. So I woke up this morning thinking, oh my gosh, I have all these questions, all these issues, all these problems with the paperwork. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the trip. So I'm laying in bed stressed. I do something I sometimes do in the morning, which is I take up my damn phone, I bring out my audiobooks. I've got hundreds of audiobooks. I'm like a bit of an audiobook addict. And I start playing my uh, Walter Isaacson, Leonardo da Vinci auto, uh, biography, right? I'm sitting there listening to it. And this sort of thing drives my girlfriend crazy. She says to me, sleep is sacred. When you come out of sleep, you do not pick up your phone and start diddling with it and 
pumping words into your head. She's like, you are an information addict. Well, it's kind of true. So I was doing that this morning and it was early and I found myself thinking, you should probably sit. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to get up and sit, then I should probably go and do all these things that are making my anxious mind go crazy. Because if I sit, I'm just going to think about all these anxious things and my mind is going to go crazy. But then I said, okay, let's just sit for 10 minutes. Fuck about the 10 minute time I sit. And the practice is what I just told you. I know the practice. That's the baseline practice. That's what mindfulness teachers tell you more or less. That's what any Zen teacher worth their salt is going to tell you. You sit and breathe. The mind wanders. You return your breath to the, you return your mind to the breath. And that's it. Over and over and over. But we experience the practice at different times in our life in different ways. And maybe a lot of you are like me, you're doing a home practice now. You're doing 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening, which is a great practice. 25 would be even better. 25 minutes is a full sit in Zen Buddhism. If you can do 25 in the morning, 25 in the evening, you're gold. But we can't always do that. So I thought to myself, I, I can't sit. My mind is going too crazy. And I thought, just, just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. So I folded my, my um, uh, pillows, I wrapped my blanket around my naked body, so I sleep in the nude, and I did my 10 minute power sit. Now, what is this? Well, I sat, I did my breath. I've been sitting for a long time and I've noticed something. When, when something is pushing inside of me and wants to be heard, that voice of anxiety, I've noticed that if I try and force my mind into the breath, I lose a certain kind of sensitivity, a, a certain touch with my whole body. It's like the part of me that wants to come forward has to be pushed back because I'm doing this activity of breathing. So I let the voice come up today. Now this is not like standard Zen practice. This is a little bit more my personal thing. Sometimes there's, there's something going on inside that I need to listen to. So I just let it come up. This is not the same thing as thinking, okay? Thinking is always wrong. That's what I was taught and more or less I think that that's true. If you're thinking on the cushion, it's not helpful. Your mind is, is, is distracting your body and your body is distracted from your mind. I mean, I was taught that in Zazen, we unify mind and body and surroundings in the activity of sitting, okay? So this morning, I let the thought come up and I could, the anxiety, and it was just a feeling. And I, and I, and I focused on it in the same way that I would normally focus on my breath, not on the thoughts, not in the anxiety about do I have all my passport photos, is my girlfriend's passport photo of her new passport or her old pass, none of that. Okay, it was just the feeling. And then I got to look at it briefly or, or it presented itself to me briefly. And there's something that happens when that natural awake state, dis through that you discover what you're thinking and feeling. Okay, normally I would just be caught up in the anxiety. I would rush out of my bed, come into the, my mom's living room and start doing my tasks for the day. And I wouldn't know that the energy or the engine behind that task was an anxious, nervous energy, coloring everything I was doing, everything I was saying, and all the work I was trying to accomplish for that day. It's very brief. I told you in the beginning of this video that my little secret, and I wanna share it with you, is that in my experience, a little bit of Zen done sincerely and with focus and as part of a much bigger picture of a consistent practice over a period of time where you start to get to figure out what it means to practice, if you do just a little bit of it, it goes a very long way. So just in that moment, it, which I was just gonna do a 10 minute sit, I actually did 20, so it's a 20 minute power sit, but I like 10 minute power sit. Uh, something, something Tim Ferriss or Brene Brown would push on us. Um, you just do a little bit and you can, it's like taking a snapshot. Oh, that's what my inner life is like today. And once you see that snapshot, the energy behind it dissolves. It's like a ghost when you flick on the lights, it disappears, okay? There's an awakeness, a, a natural wisdom inside of us that wants to come, that wants to be plumb, 
does, it's like the bubble in the little measuring, uh, little uh, equilibrium stick when you're doing carpentry. It wants to be plumb right in the middle and you're tilting this way because you're anxious. So you're tilting this way because you're depressed. There's a natural wisdom in us. And if we just pause, just take, t stop, take a breath, let that stuff come up. We can, we can set ourselves back to square, square one or hit the reset button. It's a great practice to do in the morning before you head out into your day with your dream phantom self swirling around in your head from the night before and your ambitious early morning self ready to tackle the day. Take a breath, do your 10 minute power sit, let all the stuff come up. Return your attention to the breath, but don't ignore what you're feeling. Don't, don't give yourself another task that early in the morning. Remember, sleep is sacred. When you wake up from your sleep, don't be hitting yourself over the head with the ambition to meditate properly. Just let yourself feel what you're feeling. You know, it's like when you see a baby in the morning, a little baby, and you take it out of the crib. Where is it at? You just let it wake up in your arms. Let your self, your, your little small s self, wake up in your arms in the morning. Feel it. Feel that anxiety and then let it go. And I know it's still down there somewhere, but I'm usually a little bit more ready to face my day now. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I offer all these videos for free. Uh, if you can help out and you want to help out, I'd really appreciate that. Um, I have a Patreon page under Shows on Jack Hobner where you can go and you can see videos and blogs and um, uh, different essays that I've written. I'm working on a book right now and these are kind of like test runs for chapters for a book. So I put those up there. Um, I also have a PayPal link where you can donate to. Uh, like I said, I offer these teachings for free, um, but if you want to throw a little something in the begging bowl, that'd be great. Take care.